there's almost no getting around the fact that as far as rugby league goes, Sydney is the most crowded market in the world, with nine clubs, more than half the entire league wedged between Bondi Beach in the east, the Shire in the south, the beaches in the north and the magnificent Blue Mountains in the west. In that landscape, the nine NRL clubs, the Canterbury Banks Town Bulldogs, Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, Parramatta Eels, Penrith Panthers, South Sydney Rabbitohs, St George Illawarra Dragons, Sydney Roosters and West Tigers all fight tooth and nail for resources, crowd share and the attention of one of the most flippant sporting markets in the world. With that in mind, it's easy to see how some clubs can almost feel irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, lost amongst the overcrowded market and left to fight for their share on several fronts. Without the consistent growth in crowd figures the NRL touted as a major part of their plan moving forward at the inception of the commission, and with a backdrop of reported financial mismanagement and free spending at the management levels of the game, the very real prospect that one or more Sydney clubs could be forced to shift themselves geographically in order to survive seems closer and closer than at any time in recent memory. The Daily Telegraph, one of Sydney's flagship NRL covering newspapers this week polled a number of fans on a wide range of issues, and amongst the data and responses was the suggestion that almost 40% of respondents touted the Tigers as the team that should be forced out of the Sydney market to allow other clubs the breathing space required to continue to develop and grow. This figure puts them clearly ahead of the next most selected, the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks 17% and the Sydney Roosters 14% while traditional Heartland clubs in Sydney's West like the Panthers and Eels only managed 1% of the vote. Overall, of the 9,000 participants, 63% agreed with the thought that Sydney had too many teams currently in the NRL, the case for relocating the Tigers for the Tigers. The story comes at the end of a torrid season in which they sacked a coach, lost a number of key players to rival clubs and are just two points ahead of the last place Newcastle Knights on the ladder, having won just six of their 22 matches. Tigers CEO Justin Pascoe was quick to issue a statement in the wake of the publication of the poll results, strongly refuting ever suggestion the club would ever be relocated, but that does not change the fact that things are trending toward the need to move a Sydney club out of the way. For the club itself, talk of relocation and a struggle to prove viability in the marketplace are nothing new. At the turn of the century, with the NRL facing a need to justify the existence of clubs in the Sydney Basin, the Balmain Tigers and Western Suburbs Magpies, too proud, old clubs were forced into a merger in order to survive and thus, the West's Tigers were born. It has not always been a comfortable or palatable relationship. Initial concerns about the cannibalization of the Magpies brand, with the Tigers' name and colors far more prominent, were overwhelmed by a 2005 Premiership triumph on the back of a skillful and vibrant Benji Marshall and in recent years, the growth of the West's brand financially has seen them tip the balance of power in their favor. As things stand though, of all the clubs in Sydney, it is probably the Tigers who can lay claim to the weakest argument for not moving. Rightly or wrongly traditional powerhouses like the Sydney Roosters and South Sydney Rabbitohs, with all their financial strength and corporate backing are not going to be relocated from Sydney, ever. The Bunnies might play well west of their traditional home base of Redfern, but they still represent a strong and vocal community. The other clubs that represent the West, the Panthers, Eels and Bulldogs both strengthen their geographical position and they were strong junior bases and decent crowd figures. The Bulldogs are always a decent drawcard, even during a poor season, the Eels represent a hugely important brand in the league and also boast good crowds and membership figures and the investment by Panthers in the local region, from the multi-million dollar academy facility and their ownership of the biggest and most successful junior nursery in the game means they will remain safe. On the southern side of town, the Dragons represent two huge geographical areas with big supporter bases in both the St George, Cogra areas of Sydney and the south coast and Wollongong courtesy of the merger between the Dragons and Illawarra Steelers. The Sharks, once a likely candidate have gotten themselves on a more even keel, invested heavily in their facilities and surrounding property and won the Premiership last year. As a brand, the Sharks are more relevant in the Shire now than ever before. Lastly, the Sea Eagles represent the only presence for the game on the northern beaches and the peninsula to the north of Sydney, one of the few pockets in Sydney where rugby union maintains a strong community, so, coupled with the long history of success, it's highly unlikely the NRL would want to shift the Sea Eagles either. With all of that in mind, in almost a process of elimination, style approach, the Tigers feel like the only viable option in the short to mid-term for a Sydney team to be relocated from their current base. 
the case for not relocating the Tiger Show Can You Move On A Club That Won A Premiership In The Last 20 Years, represents two huge and passionate geographical bases in Sydney and is the merged result of two famous old clubs with more history and heritage than many modern-day clubs will have in the next century. To so many people, the West's Tigers, as were the Magpies and Balmain Tigers before them, are a way of life. Already these two fan bases were mashed together and forced to coexist in order to survive, can you really ask them, 18 years later, to up sticks and follow the club to Brisbane, Perth or anywhere else? More to the point, I don't remain convinced that axing or relocating a Sydney club will do anything to combat stagnant, or in some cases diminishing crowd figures. Walto Wall television coverage, some of the best and most in-depth in the world and the fact that too many games are jammed into huge, monolithic stadiums with no personality and no atmosphere with less than 70,000 fans in attendance have made it a far more realistic prospect for many people to stay home, shell out their $50 odd to Foxtel and watch every game with cheap beer, cheap food and the home comforts we all love. Others will point to the cost of going to the footy, especially for families. This is a hugely contentious issue. On one hand, people will tell you they simply can't afford to pack up the car and take the kids to the footy without a small loan, while others will say eat at home, take some drinks with you and tough it out, you'll be fine. I'm not coming down on one side or the other on this one, but you have to expect there are definitely people who have stopped going to the footy because of the perceived hit to the back pocket. Moving the West's Tigers, or any other club won't change that. Tigers fans could also point to some other Sydney clubs and ask why they couldn't be merged. Surely the merger of two more Sydney clubs would free up enough space in the Sydney market to satisfy most of the concerns and also free up some playing talent for an expansion team elsewhere, whether that's a second Brisbane team or somewhere else. Some will point to the proximity of the Panthers and Eels and say one club could feasibly cover the area, so they could be merged a one axe to scent packing. I would NT say it's something I would agree with, but, Bias declared, I am a Penrith fan so that probably clouds my view there. That said, I can't think of too many Penrith fans who would follow the Parramatta Panthers, or Penrith Eels or whatever moniker the PR department could knock up on that one. Lastly, people talk about the desperate need to move on a Sydney-based club for the health and well-being of the game, but while there's plenty of room for improvement on plenty of fronts, the game ISNT withering in front of our eyes. We can look at ways to boost and grow the game, and one of those may be the relocation of a Sydney club, but alternatively, the powers that be can look at a myriad of other options for reigning in the free spending at NRL HQ and for growing the game. So how do we move forward? At this state it looks more likely that we'll have the status quo for the short term. The powers that be would most probably be reluctant to pull the trigger and enter a messy legal battle in order to force a club to move, or the costly exercise of trying to entice one to do so, so we are faced with no real change to the makeup of the competition for the next few years. Expansion also looks off the cards given the inability for all 16 clubs to maintain their financial health without league assistance and the over-reliance on sponsorship dollars see don't claim to have all the answers, or all the answers for that matter, and smarter, more connected heads will be vexed with the questions raised longer and later into the night than mine, but it does feel inevitable that the question of too many Sydney-based clubs will continue to come up and may, one day, result in the relocation, whether forced or enticed, of a club outside the Sydney metropolitan area. Do you think a Sydney NRL club needs to be relocated to help the game prosper? If so, which one? Let us know in the comments and poll below. Want to share your opinion? Why not write for us? Previous post, previous, next post, next.